Alrighty gang, this is the update. First of all, um, I tried to buy parts here for the upgrade I want to do on this guitar. And I couldn't find them in Canada. And if I bought them off of Amazon, they were going to go and be shipped from China, some of them anyway. So I thought, why bother? I'll go right to AliExpress, find them all, and order it there. Because if I have to wait five or six weeks for one thing to come, I might as well just wait for all of them to come. All right, so, peekaboo. Um, I decided that because I still have the strings, I can work on the nut problem. So I got the original nut out, and I thought, hmm, it's narrow, so I can take one of my bone nuts and shave it down. But then when I got it out, I saw how tall it is, and I'm going, damn, standard bone nuts are not that tall. So I hummed and hawed, and I looked at it, and I go, mm, I, I need a shim of some kind. So I found this piece of bamboo uh, hanging around. I have no idea where it came from. So it's nice and hard, and uh, I ended up shaving a sliver, which is 1.16 uh, millimeters on this side, and one point something on that side, a little bit smaller. Um, to put in the bottom of the slot down there so that it adds up my nut to be the relative height that I need for it to sit over my strings. So I basically made a, you know, a compensator for the bottom. Now all I have to do is take this and glue it to the bottom of the uh, slot and I'm gonna just you know paint the ends black to match kind of like the, the laurel and won't even know it's there and then the nut will go on top glue it to the top of this shim and then she'll be good so when I put that in the slot I'll just kind of show you that goes right in the bottom I've got a tool somewhere here, here it is and I'm just tapping that down to make sure it goes to the bottom and I'll glue it there. And then the nut fits on top really nicely. And I kind of locked out a bit. Because I measured it. And now that, uh, you know, that's sitting on the shim. Virtually every string height is exactly uh, 18 thou on the base side and 16 thou on the treble side. So it's very, very, very close to being perfect, just as it is. So I don't have to take any more height off or possibly not have to adjust those slots uh, other than to maybe make a little bit more of a back angle on them. Just a tad with the uh, with the round files. You know, these type of round files that are used for HVAC systems to clean jets. These little round files, they, they clean out the slots really nicely and they, uh, they keep the roundness at the bottom to match you know, the roundness of your string. So all you got to do is find the right size that fits in your slot, not bigger, not smaller, and then you can clean out. Like sometimes there's a little bit of debris and stuff in there, you can just kind of like clean them out just by running that in there like that and you get any little burrs and stuff off the edges and it keeps the bottom of your slot nice and nice and round and smooth for your string to pass through so that it doesn't uh, catch and this one you can see is a little bit like aged beige well it's hard to see in that light but let's see if I can uh, kind of like aged beige like that compared to my white one yeah I'm going to try something that I've seen for something else where I'm going to drop this in a little bit of coke for a while and see if I can stain it uh, to be closer because it's going to stand out as being pretty white against the black headstock so I think I can give that a shot I can't hurt I can't get it any whiter dropping it in coke 
So that's what I'm going to do. Leave it in some coke for a while. While <clears throat> I glue that part in and uh, wait for that to go. I'll be right back. Okay, looky here. I have been able to keep this nut in some coke for a few hours. This is the original white and then this is the slightly aged look. I think it matches uh, the board well. It's not as beige as the original but at least it's darker than the white and I think that will look just as good at the top of the fretboard right like that as opposed to that I mean that won't look I mean that wouldn't look bad it's a beautiful white but uh, yeah just trying to keep it close to the same color that aged look is nice so the bone soaked up some of that uh, coke color just from a little glass like that so that's working and I'm not going to glue that in now uh, okay the shim is glued in and it's good um, but I'm not going to glue the nut in now because I have to wait for all the other things to be done including any fret leveling which I haven't just checked yet anyway so um, this is going to go now back in the bag on hold for a few weeks until I I get some parts. I can complete the, the job. Since I'm eager to continue work, a change of plan, I've decided to remove the neck, cut the strings because I don't really need them now. I can do final adjustments with uh, the new strings when they go on. Let's see what we got. Saw this in the pocket. Very roughly done. And you know what? It's got that it's got that dip again down at the down at the back end. I don't know. You probably won't be able to see that, but right here it's deeper than the rest of the shelf here I've seen that in another one I don't know if it was the one of the other moons or something else but I've seen that kind of a uh, dip before and the way the neck was sitting it was sitting straight so if that dip was going to pull it up it would pull it this way and that would make it yeah not right I might have to create a shim to fill that in so that it sits flat to make sure it doesn't move on me. So this body can be moved over to uh, bench number two while I go after the frets on the neck and oh yeah cleaning up how yeah, they leave all that chippy stuff there yeah yeah, you know, on these on these budget guitars, they do stuff like that. Sometimes that acts as a shim. And then when I clean it off and I put it back together, I have to put a shim in because it was straight when they when they did that. And if I don't clean it out, it'll be forever variable. So it's just got to be done. Anywho, while I'm doing the the fret leveling and the edging and polishing and uh, nurturing the, the Indian laurel I'm going to uh, look for tuners as well see the shim got in there pretty good all I had to do is blacken it on both ends that makes it sit high enough for my standard fender nut to go in that slot where there's a will, there's a way. I just wanted to quickly show you what happened at bench two. Uh, completely discobobulated, you know, the body. 
I'm going to uh, do a nice, you know, cleaning and buffing of the surface. It's pretty nice, but it's uh, it's going to be a little bit better when I'm done. Uh, I don't see any obvious issues, but uh, you know, there's little bits of scuffs and dirt and stuff here and there. So we're going to make it perfect as as it can be. The big surprise on this thing was this bridge. The weight of the metal on this thing gauge is like really, really thick. Yeah, moon. It's it's uh, thicker than I've had on uh, many guitars. Now, <clears throat> they also lied about this pickup. Uh, they said it's El Nico. It's obviously a big ceramic magnet. Um, I disconnected the cover and there's just slugs with the big ceramic magnet on the bottom of it. I'll save that and the rest of it's going to go. Uh, same with this one. I'm going to pull that off, save these interconnect wires and uh, the pickup is gone. I mean, you know, for a beginner guitar, uh, somebody who um, wants to see if they want to learn, uh, these pickups are good enough to figure that out and uh, to learn to play some stuff until you uh, you get good enough that you think you want to move up to something a little bit better in the form of pickups and sound. Um, this guitar is a, is a perfect platform for that. So I want to just want to quickly show you this stuff. Um, before I go back to bench one and do the fret work, um, I've completely uh, taken everything off the control plate. Uh, of course, I will be putting a three position wafer switch on here, I think. And I have to drill a, another hole between these two on this plate as well <clears throat> for my intended modification. And I'm going to uh, put a standard uh, pick guard on here um, instead of instead of this I found that uh, this shape uh, is a replication of a Fender um, player guitar I think it was that I found this on there are some replacement um, pick guards in this shape as well on uh, on Amazon and other places <clears throat> even AliExpress it's a, it's a very thin three ply. Yeah. And uh, it's time for me to go back to bench one and um, do the leveling of the fretwork, polish everything up, uh, take care of the fretboard, and uh, wait then for the parts that are going to come in for me to modify everything on this guitar. Okay, she's taped up and ready to go. There were quite a few places. Uh, here, 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 there, 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 and that's just the initial ones that I find since I can't use this to check, you know, either side. Um, you just concentrate on that, and then once you do the passing, uh, you just recheck them all again to, until, you've, until you've got none. Well, this took a couple of hours, but here they are gleaming and ready to go. I just gotta get the tape off, clean up the fretboard, clean me up, and uh, get some lemon oil on that and uh, let her sit for a while. Now that's a nice neck. Yes indeed. So that's ready to Go once the other parts come in.